This is a presentation of the product opcwebtrend.net, one of 12 product features of the full opcsystems.net suite. This product is for real-time and historical trending for ASP.NET web applications. There are many different types of charts that you can choose from. We'll see how to implement each of these in this training video. The components are 100% managed and can be integrated with Visual Studio 2003, 2005, 2008, or the free-to-use Web Express developer that you can download from Microsoft.com. Each licensed OPC system service supports unlimited numbers of web applications running locally or remotely. You can also connect each web application to multiple services. In this way, you can build a very scalable web application. Historical Replay is also supported with the product opcdatabase.net. opcsystems.net implements .NET remoting. This allows you to eliminate the need for DCOM and use the Internet as a communication data service. In this video, we'll see where to run a live example at opcsystemserver.com to see a live update of data being served from Texas so you can see you can share data to any client in the world. Let's see how to implement opcwebtrend.net into an ASP.NET web application. The first thing you would want to do is determine your data source. If you haven't yet viewed the data sources video, I would suggest that you do this to see how you can get data from OPC servers, OPC clients, Visual Studio applications, and databases. If you're using the opcsystems.net tags, you would use the configure application to define your data source. Under the program group opcsystems.net, select configure OPC systems. Select configure tags and select the data service that you want to configure. We'll select the local service. Let's select the ramp tag from the demo configuration. Notice that the trend point option is checked. This is important for real-time trending for any of the parameters of an opcsystems.net tag. You can also trend alarm limits and alarm status just under each alarm parameter tab. You can also enable time on and count information when the enable time on and counts property is checked and the trend point option is also selected. You can export the tags using the CSV export feature to then use Microsoft Excel to set up your opcsystems.net tags. You can also connect directly to OPC servers and OPC items directly from the web trend component using the direct OPC interface. For historical replay, you will also want to enable data logging found under configure data logging. This was demonstrated in the training video opcdatabase.net. Now let's start Microsoft Visual Studio. From Visual Studio, you want to select file, new, website, or ASP.NET Web Project. You want to select an ASP.NET website and specify a location of where you would like that to be stored. The code view or the design view will appear. Let's select the design tab at the very bottom so that we can see the web form design view. We will want to use the toolbox to select the OPC Web Trend component to drop onto the form. If you don't see your toolbox, select View Toolbox. If you have not added the OPC Web Trend component to the form yet, you can right click on the toolbox and select Choose Items. As a minimum, you will want to select the OPC Web Trend component, the OPC Web Refresh component, and an OPC Web Controls label. There are other product features for web development which is OPC Web Alarm and OPC Web Controls. And also there's the OPC Controls data component if you need to read and write data from your web application. First we will drop an OPC Web Refresh component onto the form. This will determine the update rate for the real-time trending for this page. Each web page that you want to implement the OPC Web Trend product on, you will want to implement one OPC Web Refresh component on the page. Select the OPC Web Refresh component and right click on it to select properties. It is the refresh rate that determines the update rate for the page. The next thing we want to do is to drag on just one OPC Web Control label onto the form. This will add a registration to the web application for the live updates. 
Once you have added the label to at least one form, you can now delete it. You will not have to do this step for each web page, only once per web application. Next, select the OPC Web Trend Control and drag it onto the form. Go ahead and move the trend control where you would like to position it. Under Layout, Position, you may want to choose Absolute Positioning or Relative Positioning. Absolute Positioning allows the components to stay and stick where you place them in the design view. Relative Positioning will automatically stack the components after each other. I prefer to use Absolute Positioning so the runtime view is exactly the same as we have in the design view. I'm going to change the size of the trend area. Select the trend control, right click on it and select properties or hit F4. There are many different properties of the trend control. You can change the background color, maybe the chart color, currently defaults to white, maybe we would want to change that to dark red. So you can see in the design view, as you make changes to the property, the design view will, will change itself. We'll inspect some of the most commonly used properties of the trend control. We have the sample rate, which defaults to one second. This together with the time frame cannot exceed 3600 samples. The default time frame is 60 seconds. The maximum time frame that you can have at a one second sample rate is one hour. If you had a time frame of one day, the maximum sample rate would be 24 seconds, but I would recommend maybe 30 seconds or 60 seconds as a sample rate so that they're evenly divisible to the minute. Under the scale mode you can choose absolute scaling, percent of pen ranges, or best fit. Let's select percent of pen ranges. Percent of pen ranges means that each individual pen has its own scaling on the y-axis. Later we'll see how to define the range for each individual pen under the pens property. Let's change the title of the trend to test trend. The x-axis time format defaults to hours, minutes, and seconds, but you can display dates in there as well. Just use a standard format there. If you're using absolute positioning, the y-axis range high and y-axis range low are important to determine the y-axis scale. We're instead using percent of pen ranges, so we'll leave this to 0 to 100 percent. You can also make the y-axis invisible if you'd like. Let's now select the pens property. This is how you define the data to display in the trend. You can select data from a remote service by entering an IP address, network node name, or registered internet domain name in the network node field and then hit the select button. You would want to specify a remote node if you plan to run your web application on a remote PC other than where the OPC system service that you're connecting to. In this example we're going to run the web application on the same computer as the OPC system service so we'll select a local service. Here we see a list of tags but not all of the tags in the tag configuration. We only see a list of tags that have the trend point property enabled. We also have the direct OPC interface this allows you to connect directly to OPC items on OPC servers without going through the OPC systems.net tags. Let's select the ramp signal and value. We'll right click on that value parameter and select add trend point. That tag now appears in the pen list in the lower left. If we select that pen, the properties for that pen appear. You can see that we've brought the description across from the tag configuration, but you can change that to anything you'd like. For history replay, if the data logging service is on a different node than the real-time pens, you can set the history tag property by browsing the data logging group and field that you want to replay from. If you leave it blank, the system will automatically find the data logging group and field name that is associated with the tag and variable that you have defined in your real-time pen. You can change the legend format for this individual pen, change the line color, thickness, you can even implement a transparency percentage for this individual pen. The line type can be solid, dashed, you can implement a symbol for each of the samples. The trend order property allows you to change the ordering of each of the individual pens. 
You can also display units in the legend. You can also make this pen visible or invisible based upon the visible property. The y-axis range high and y-axis range low are the two parameters we talked about earlier where you can specify each individual pen's y-axis range. Let's go back up to the tag list. Let's browse for the random point. Let's add it also. And let's add the sign signal. Select the random pen, change its line color to green. Select the sign pen, change its line color to red. Also for the sign, change the y-axis high range from 1 to minus 1. This is the range of values for that sign signal. When we click OK, we see a simulated representation of the pens in the trend window. Select the trend type property. The default is to just display a 2D line. We can also display 3D lines, an area, an area 3D, all kinds of different formats that you would, might want to implement. Most commonly used is the 2D trend type. There is a toolbar that the user can use to replay history. You can make that invisible by setting the trend toolbar visible property to false. Let's save the website and right click on the form window and select view in browser to see what that trend is going to look like. Because the service has already had this particular time frame and sample rate configuration already requested of it, it has cached all of the real-time data in the service. So when we first bring up the web application, all of the data is then presented for that last 60 seconds. In order to maintain that real-time cache between system starts, you would use the Configure OPC Systems application found under the program group opcsystems.net. Select Configure Options and select the service that you want to enable this feature on. If you scroll down to the bottom of the options, there's a property called Retain Real-Time Trends to File. You then simply specify a binary file to store the real-time cache data to. Then when your OPC system service restarts, it has maintained all of the real-time data. For history replay, you would want to set up data logging found under Configure Data Logging. Again, this is demonstrated in the training video for opcdatabase.net. I'll set up a simple example for you now so we can use the history feature in the trend window. I'll enter a logging group name, make it active. I'll take the default of a continuous logging at one second rate. I'll add a few tags. I've added to the data logging configuration the tags ramp, random, and sign. Now we'll log to SQL Server. We'll obtain the local database engine from the SQL Server Management Studio. We need to know what is the server name for the SQL Server engine. When you first launch the SQL Server Management Studio, you'll see the server name appear right there. You can also browse and connect to remote services as well. I'll enter a database name of test and a table name of test. I will then add that logging group to the configuration. And now the system has automatically created the database and table on the SQL Server engine and added the field names that I have defined under the Tags tab. We are now logging information to SQL Server at a one second rate. Let's return to our web application and select the History button. We can then specify a start an end time, and then hit the select button. We are then returning history for the last 10 minutes, and notice that we don't have data.
prior to when we started data logging, and we haven't yet reached the time to the right of the data. To return back to the real-time window, select the real-time button.